Hello and welcome to Behind the Scenes with me. As you can tell, it is pre-makeup for the video today. I think today I'm actually going to be shooting a video on my Barbie typewriters. Spoiler, I have Barbie typewriters. And I put them in a box to take with me to the studio today. And I think we're just gonna try to plow through that video. It's been a long time coming. I did my research writing for it yesterday where I made like a timeline and a bit of a script. And I just figured it'd be a good chance to take you guys behind the scenes. It's probably the last day I'll ever be filming in my studio here on campus because I won't be moving here the next year. So it's kind of like a, a memory to the original studio where just my typewriter was born. Also, it's very loud in here because of my AC unit. At least I have an AC unit. It's July. So this is the studio that I used to film all my videos in. There's my favorite chair. And here's my equipment. I just got these lights. I won a teaching award here at the college that I work at and they asked me to put in some requests for equipment that I could get with the money I won from the award. And that's what I bought. I bought this fancy light kit and a tripod, a couple other things, but I'm really excited to use them on my typewriter videos. And this is the typical room that I would film in. Typically when I used to film, I'd be using this high table, but there's a ton of lighting equipment on it and I just don't feel like moving it. So I'm gonna use this low table. This low table has been in a couple other videos as well. This has been in my doll toy unboxing. It's been in, I think some of my type test videos. It's a little bit longer, a little bit heavier, but it also has less stuff on it and I can just turn it from one side without needing that other person. Also, there's a very loud AC unit in here and I will turn that off when I go to film so I don't have to worry about audio interference. The hardest part of any production for me is always lighting. I always get a shadow behind myself, even though I use a ton of lights. One trick I have when setting up my camera, and maybe this is just super obvious to everyone else, but you see how this tripod plate, this quick release plate has lens pointed in both ways. So you could put the lens plate sideways or you could put it this way. I always put it with the thin part facing the front of the camera because I can easily access my battery door so I can replace batteries really easily without having to take off the plate. And then I can just snap it back into the tripod. To be fair, I'm still learning how to use this tripod because it's new to me and I don't quite like it yet, but uh, I'll figure it out. So setup takes a while. Typically in this environment, it takes me about a half hour to set up. It didn't take me long to set up all the equipment, but then I have to go through and do all the adjustments, which takes forever. And then after I have that set up, I have to focus the camera, which again takes forever because I'm by myself and I need help. And when I'm in a different environment, this doesn't usually take as long. When I'm filming at home, I actually set my setup up and I leave it up for a couple days, film a couple videos a few days in a row, and then I tear it down. Here, I set it up and tear it down during the same shoot, just so I don't lose any of my equipment. So here's one of my lights, and this part usually takes me a while to figure out where all the lighting should go. My biggest issue in this studio has always been getting a shadow behind me on this back gray background. And I know I'm supposed to use three point lighting and I have three lights and I'm using them. It just takes me a bit to get it set up properly. So now that I have the lights on, I'm going to turn on my camera and see what the settings look like. I might need to, to up it a little bit. So here's my camera. I've had this camera for six, seven years. Bought it for myself when I graduated from high school, aging myself. And here's what I'll do. I'll sit here, look at it, and then make adjustments based on the screen. The first thing I can tell is that it is crooked. You see here how the table is crooked? Some of my videos actually do turn out crooked and I have to readjust them in editing. And I just don't enjoy doing that very much. So I'm going to adjust the level here on the table and then I'm going to go through and adjust the settings so this is bright enough. It looks brighter on the iPhone than it is in real life. The next struggle I have is always getting my camera in focus. 
because I can't focus while I'm sitting up there because I have to be behind the camera doing the focus. I don't like using autofocus because I think it really uh, goes in and out of focus and I'm not totally a fan of that style. However, it does mean that some videos on this channel are just a little bit blurry when they go out there into the real world. So my tactic here is I usually put some kind of item on the desk where my face would typically be and I zoom in on it and try to get it as in focus as possible using the tiny, tiny little monitor on the camera. And I do have focus assist on here, so the little dots around this purse show that this is in focus. When they light up red, it's in focus. So it's kind of in focus. The next thing I do is I will put on my actual filming outfit and I'll do a couple run throughs where I'll go up here, sit in this chair to see if my head is in the room of the frame just to make sure that it looks okay. I'll do a couple test runs of that and then we'll actually set up to film. So I did adjust my seat a little bit so I wanna refocus the camera on that purse again just to make sure for sure, for sure, that I'm gonna be in focus. I'm gonna focus a little bit further back on this silver piece, which is a little bit further back than this red, because I think that's more like where I would have my face. Okay, I think we'll try that. Be careful not to step on any cords this out of frame. I have my mic sitting on my chair, so I have to be careful not to sit on it. <laughs> and then here's my view. There's my dress on the chair that I'll be wearing. Here's the camera. I'm gonna make sure my teacup is in frame. I wave at the camera. Hello, camera. I sit up a little bit. I scrunch down a little bit just to make sure I have enough headroom when I'm moving around. There's my audio setup. And then we go back and we check it again. The next thing I do is flip this around so that I can kind of see it when I'm there. Although I'm blind without my glasses, so sometimes I use my phone and zoom in all the way so that I can see to make sure that this is recording. Now we're going to shut off the AC so that I don't have audio interference while filming. Now you can actually hear in here because I turned off the AC unit a little bit better for audio. Now I'm gonna change out of my work clothes into something a little bit dressier. Not sure how good of a transition that actually was. So here's the outfit I'll be wearing. I'm still wearing my leggings underneath it. I always get so nervous changing in here when I'm getting into an outfit because I don't wanna be sweating through a dress while I'm trying to set up all these cameras. I change and the door is closed and there's nobody in the building, but I always get nervous that somebody's gonna like put the coat in the door while I'm like halfway dressed. Filming life, I guess. So I'm gonna go set up my audio really quickly and then I think we're ready to film, maybe. One thing I always do is because I'm paranoid and I can't see from this far away without my glasses is I zoom in all the way on my phone and try to just make sure that I'm at least recording. I can see the little red dot in the camera, so I know I'm at least recording from this far away. And then, we film. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I am so excited for this video, as you can see by the typewriter title. So on August 8th of 2020, I released a video about the Barbie typewriter. You can hear my chair squeaking. In short, I'm so, I'm short. So if you're interested in more typewriter content, Jeff, definitely. Okay, so I think I've just filmed the bulk of the video with these two typewriters, and now I'm gonna go in and do my second shot. I only have one camera set up for this. I used to use two, but it's too hard to kind of coordinate all of the footage between two of them, and this camera is my personal camera, so I know how to use it a little bit better. Now I'm gonna go in and do a second shot where I actually test this typewriter for the first time. I've never used it, so I'm really excited. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera angle for that, which means I can like, deprissify myself a little bit. I feel a little bit like overdone in this pink dress and with my hair down. So here's the second setup. <laughs> Hello. So I did my two shot and ran into technical difficulties with the actual Barbie typewriter. I have to fix it now. 
but that'll be a project for another day. Right now we're gonna shoot some B-roll. And how I do that is I set up my camera a little bit lower and I shoot just right on the table. And I get to take off my mic because I was tired of being recorded. I wanted to film a second video about how this is the last time I'll be in here and go over some of my typewriter fails. So I filmed a little intro that's like non-conventional. <laughs> that's a little bit more of me setting up and tearing down. We'll see if this video ever sees the light of day, but that's what I've been doing. Now I'm done filming officially in this room. The next part of the process for me is tear down. So then I'll be taking down the lights and the camera, putting everything back in this room the way it was before so nobody knows I was here. And then I pack it all back into my 26 year old car and hope I get home. All right, so I have the whole studio packed up. I'm ready to go, still wearing this ridiculous lipstick. And I thought I'd just briefly talk about a little bit of what you just saw. So that is one of the studio labs we have here at the college that I go to. I'm a grad student. By the time you're seeing this, I'm working on my dissertation. I just took comps this week, so pray for me. But I have been a student here at this college for six years. I did my undergrad and my master's here. Now I'm doing my PhD. I've been a TA uh, for the 2020-21 school year. I taught television production. My background is in production. I've been making videos since I was in sixth grade. When I came here to this school, I got to manage student teams. I managed an internship over the summer. This past summer, I was managing the radio station for the whole summer. I've had a lot of great opportunities at the school. A lot of the equipment that I've been able to use prior to the past few videos has been school equipment that I've been able to borrow. Um, I've just had a lot of great opportunity here. And if I hadn't done the master's program here, this YouTube channel would have never existed because I actually started this YouTube channel Instagram as a project for one of my master's classes in production. So that's why I'm here in this studio setup. This is, I'm, I'm leaving this year to go work on my dissertation. So I'm saying goodbye to this studio space, the space that I've worked on for a lot of different projects, just my typewriter included. So that's a little bit about my background. After this, now we're gonna put all this stuff in the car and then I'm gonna download footage and then eventually I will edit the footage. You're seeing this footage from right now. We filmed uh, July 31st, August 1st. This video that we filmed today probably won't go up until October or November. I like to schedule far in advance. I've got videos scheduled until November at this point. So I'm trying to make content ahead of time so that when stuff comes up, I still have a video I can release. That's a little bit about the scheduling that goes into this YouTube channel. So let's pack up and then I think we're gonna get coffee because I'm dying. Done with filming. Finally made it home, got all my stuff back in my apartment. You can see my cat calendar back there. Very exciting stuff. I've got my coffee and it's time to download footage and get this makeup off my face. So here's all the footage including a few photos of me looking ridiculous, which is typical. So I'm gonna go through and download all of this footage and put it onto my hard drive, where I will then sit for a while until I feel like editing. Oh, hello there. It's later the same day as filming, and I'm gonna go through and edit a little bit by just lining up my video clips with my audio clips because I record them separately, because I record through a Zoom recorder. So I have some peppermint tea, I'm tired and I'm going to match up the video with the audio probably not cut anything but at least line it up so when I feel like I can cut things I have it ready to go this is probably more realistic because I prefer to cut in the dark <laughs> So the Barbie Mattel toy typewriter started with the variation called E15. And they so what I'm doing here is I'm lining up my video clips with my audio clips because I record them separately. When I get kind of close, I'll push a clip over by a second to see if I can like get it to be off kilter. And if it's off kilter, then I know I've been closer to uh, the right thing when I had it lined up. 
So this over here is my timeline. This is what I'd be lining up or cutting together. This is my preview window to see what clip I could be pulling from. So my camera automatically stops recording after 12 minutes. So I have 12 minutes of footage at a time and that's, that's how it operates. One thing I like to do is go through and grab screen grabs of different images of me talking while in the video. And this just makes it easier to get thumbnails for the front of the YouTube video. And sometimes I need it for content on Instagram. So I'm going to go through and just scrub through this, make sure that all my video and audio are lined up again, and then grab some screen grabs of my face doing weird things while playing with the Barbie typewriter. Don't you like this like weird silhouette of a hand? over the camera. Isn't this fun? Are you bored yet? <laughs> there was a good one in there. There it is. <laughs> so this would be a really interesting or terrible shot to use for a thumbnail because there's both typewriters in it and I look crazy. So I think that's a good one to keep. Even if we don't use it for anything, we can make fun of me with it later, which is the goal. There's a keeper right there. Brilliant. Keeping that one for sure. Okay. So here's, I like where the typewriter is, but I don't like my face because I make weird facial expressions. Let's see if I have a better one. <laughs> no, here I am talking. Painful smile. There's, okay, this is embarrassing, but I have this head movement that my friend noticed I do when I'm talking and delivering a sentence to camera. I have a tendency to lift my chin up and bring it down in a circle when delivering a point. Let's see if it's here. So I bring the typewriter in. I lift my chin up. And here is that typewriter. And then I brought it down on the point. Let's go in to examine closer. Here we go. I'm gonna lift up my chin and bring it and down. here is that typewriter. Do you see that? They call that the woo pow. And apparently I do that a lot when talking on camera. I don't know if that's interesting or not, but it is one of my quirks I have and I notice it a lot when editing my footage. There's a lot of things you learn about yourself when you're watching yourself on camera and it can make you super judgmental of yourself and it's kind of hard sometimes to go back and watch some of my older videos just because I feel like I look so different now than I did in some of the original footage. I feel like they're filmed really different. My delivery's gotten really different. I cannot for the life of me watch the Christmas gift guide video from the first year of my channel because I know how frustrated I was filming that video. I had a lot of technical issues while filming it. And so when I go back and watch it, I feel like my performance is so stiff. So I can't even watch that video. And a couple other ones I have trouble with. Like I have trouble watching the collection curation video, even though it has a lot of views, because I had my friend Marcus do the focusing and he didn't focus the camera and I didn't go back and check it. And so the whole thing is out of focus, but I was really happy with the content, so I released it anyways. So it is hard for me to go back and rewatch those things. And you'll notice things about yourself as you watch your own content delivery methods. I do this thing where I swoop my head around and drop down when I deliver a fact or a point. It's like I'm getting around to the point and there it is for emphasis. For some reason I do that. I've always done that. I was on a TV show for a while here at school and I used to do that when reading from the teleprompter. So it's hard to watch those quirks in your own footage and it's hard to watch back yourself and be self-critical while editing because you're also editing what you think is interesting about yourself. I don't even know if this clip will make it into the behind the scenes footage because it's all dark, right? Because I do not feel like turning on my light right now. 
I'm wearing my hoodie so that you can't see my messy bun. But it's really weird editing yourself. It is an entirely different process than just about anything. So that's a little bit behind the scenes of like this first part of editing. As I go through, I'll go through and show you some more of my editing process. We interrupt this behind the scenes broadcast to bring you a quick segment called Spam Messages Sarah Gets on Her Typewriter Instagram. So I'm actually filming a totally different video right now, but I figured while I had the lights still set up and I still had makeup on my face, we'd go through a couple of the spam messages that I get on my typewriter Instagram at just my dot typewriter. Whoa, that was wrong. So I run a typewriter Instagram called just.my.typewriter. You've probably heard of it if you're here on this channel. I talk about it a lot. And because I have a larger number of followers on there than I do on YouTube, I get a lot of weird spam messages to my account, especially because it's also listed as a business account. And I, every time I get a message, take a screenshot of it because I just think it's funny that someone who's interested in typewriters and collecting typewriters and who does absolutely nothing else gets weird spam messages that are related to search engine optimization, let's get you sponsored by one of these products that have absolutely nothing to do with typewriters. I just think they're funny. So I take screenshots of every single one that I get and I figured we'd go through a couple of them today because they're kind of funny. So just rolling through some of these, I get a lot of weird messages from accounts that don't have any followers, don't have any posts, that don't have any profile pictures related to, hey, would you be interested in selling this product or we're looking for ambassadors for this product. I get a lot from a company called The Friendly Cup, but I never get it directly from the company's page. I only ever get it from weird spam accounts. So I've taken a lot of screenshots of those guys and I get a lot of these as well, which are like, hey, buy 500 followers for 20 bucks and we'll boost your Instagram following. All of my followers are organic. I don't pay for followers. <laughs> if I did, I'd have a lot more. I just think it's interesting that people want me to boost my typewriter content. I talk about typewriters. Like, there are other people you can find to buy your fake followers. These ones I started getting a lot of and I think they're really kind of creepy. So I get a lot of people who message me and say, hey, I just checked out your YouTube channel and your YouTube search engine optimization score and audience is very low. I can help you improve your rank in the YouTube search results. And then they send me a screenshot of my actual videos with like, boxes around stuff that says what my search engine optimization is. I don't do any search engine optimization. I don't know how to do it, but they like put boxes around my followers and view counts and likes. And I find it really weird because they went out and found an actual screenshot of my actual content. Like it's actually something I made and then sent me a spam message about it. It's just like a little bit too much work for a normal spam message. And I get several of these. So I get people who just say, hey, I'm an SEO expert. Um, here's my prices for promoting your channel. And then I get, again, people who take actual pictures of my YouTube videos and do the search engine optimization like boxes around them. I really don't like that. That makes me feel really strange. Oh, here's one in a different language that's trying to get me to promote a gambling game. No, thank you. Here's some other people who are looking for ambassadors or want to post my stuff on their channels. Oh, I found this really weird too. I did post a picture and it got to like the higher level of engagement under the typewriter hashtag. And then I got a bunch of these weird accounts starting to comment really random things on my photos and I just found it really kind of weird. So a couple of people were talking about um, finances and cryptocurrency on this. They were talking about investing in Bitcoin and how finances were changed in their lives because of cryptocurrency. It was a photo of a typewriter, so like not really gonna help anybody's bank account. Just really weird. I got tons of them all on this one photo and it was just because it had hit the top level of likes on that hashtag. So I 
just really inappropriate. Not a big fan of that. Here's one that actually wasn't a spam, and I was just a little bit taken aback by it when I first got it, because usually when you get a message from someone and they're like, hey, we'd like you to be sponsored by our product, or hey, we'd like to send you this product, it's usually spam. I got this one from the University of Toronto Press, and they said that they liked my feed and that their new book matches my feed perfectly and that they would like to send me a complimentary copy of their new book. Um, if it's something I'm interested in, please send them back. And I just kind of messaged them back because it looked like a real book and I love free books. And they got back to me and actually sent me the book. So I think it was just somebody who was actually running this uh, press account and they did see my typewriter post and I actually got the product. I wasn't sponsored by them or anything. They didn't ask me to say anything about it. They just wanted to send me a complimentary copy of the book. I actually really liked the book, uh, but I thought that that was like an interesting thing. So every once in a while you get something that shows up in your DMs that's legit, but most of the time they're just people trying to sell fake products or spam you with search engine optimization things that I'm just so not interested in. And I have gotten emails before as well that are like this to my email account that are like, we'll help you grow followers, or we'd like to post your content on this channel. And I'm just not interested in that. I also don't think that it's a really authentic way to grow an audience. And part of my routine running my Instagram is getting these messages. So every time I get one, I screenshot one. Because again, I think it's funny that people go out of their way to spam someone who just has 30 typewriters and makes silly videos about them in their house. like. I'm sure you've got better things to do than message me. So this has been Weird Spam Messages with Sarah. So here's after my first pass of it. What I do in the first pass is I cut up stuff. I fix the audio, I double it up, and then I just cut out the blank spaces in between things and kind of figure out which takes I like of certain things. Just about everything I say in a video, I've said three or four times, which is why it takes me so long to record them. So I do try to cut out and pick the ones I like best of certain takes. I had about an hour of footage when I went in to edit, and you can see I got it down to just about 26 minutes. And I still have some blank spaces in between things, and definitely a lot of these things will get cut down further, and I might even cut some of the clips or some of the information. So that's what I'll do on the next round. I'll go through, get rid of these blank spaces and kind of figure out which information is the most relevant to keep in the video. Another thing that I do is that when I'm going through and I notice something I wanna use in a behind the scenes footage kind of thing, like what we're doing right now, I'll put the layer of the video on a different track so that I know to go back in and grab stuff when it's on a different track and put it in a different video. I also cut out blooper stuff. So if you've ever watched my blooper reels before, I go through my videos and anything that I think is kind of funny, I'll cut out and set off to the side at the end of the clip. So these are two little goof ups I had while filming. I'll put them out here and then when I'm ready to make another blooper reel, I'll just go into all of my Premiere files and cut all of these guys out and put them in a separate video um, so that I can release a blooper reel. But that's kind of my first pass of editing, just doing some quick audio adjustments, a little bit of color correction, and then cutting out all the blank spaces in between clips. So I have it about to 26 minutes right now. I'll go through probably a second pass and try to get it down to the 18, 19 range. I try not to put out videos that are too long. This will be an exception because it's a cool video as is this one that you are currently in because it's a different process. But that's a little bit of my video editing process. I do four or five rounds on each video, so this is just the first pass. So it's a few days later, and I'm still going through and editing. I've laid in B-roll uh, and added some motion to the first half of the video, and I'm just cutting out some you know, boring bits in between where I look angry all the time. And then I still have the second half of the video to do, but I'll probably wait and do that later, maybe tomorrow. But I did the first half, which you know, is progress. Now I've laid in the B-roll for the second half of the video. So everything from probably around here. Oh, well you can see here I added stuff. So <laughs> from around here until here I did today. A lot of cutting in here. Just kind of laying in the next pieces and now I'm going to render it and see how long it takes. I really gotta clean my laptop. 
Do you hear the AC screaming? Because it's really loud. Anyways, I am doing a final render of a final draft of the Barbie video. Then we're going to export it and rewatch it again because I do several, several drafts just to make sure that I'm catching everything and even then I still miss stuff in the final edit, the final version. And I'm trying to make transitions as smooth as possible so anytime you see a white graphic come over the screen or something come down from the top, I'm also trying to edit with a little bit of humor every time I have a joke or something I say repetitively, like a repetitive silly phrase, I try to zoom in every time. So I go through and I check all of those and I just did an audio pass of the second half, which is where I went in and checked all the spikes in the audio and tried to get most of them out. Um, spikes are when somebody's talking into the camera or they're talking into the audio device and it gets too loud and it starts to sizzle out. When you hear something sizzling, it's too loud for the microphone. And so I drop the volume when I hit a, a peak like that. Um, and they're so annoying to catch in the audio. If I had like a noise gate, I'd throw that on there. But I don't have it in this version of Premiere, which is really annoying. So that's what I just did. And I hate doing that part of the process. So good news is that part's done. We're doing the um, render and then we'll export it and rewatch it for the 45th time. And that's just how many times it takes to feel good about a video. And even then, I still don't feel wonderful about them when they're out. It's just a long learning process, and that's okay. It's been three weeks since I filmed, so that's how long it takes to do stuff, and even then, you won't see it for months. All right, so here we are. We're doing an export of the video. We'll see how long it takes. It's a pretty long video, and I tend to export them at high quality, so we'll see how long it takes. It may take the rest of the night, but good news is I've got a lot of Shark Tank I can watch. And then I'll go through and watch this draft and double check to make sure it's ready for upload. It's been edited for a while. I'm just waiting for it to come out this weekend. Uh, and as you can see by the reflection in my blue light glasses, I'm working on another video and I am wearing a blanket jacket in case I get the urge to fall asleep while working on this video. So here's the video up on YouTube. YouTube plays ads on the front of my videos. I don't make money off of them, so feel free to skip them. <laughs> it just plays them because it wants to for no reason. Um, but this is where the Barbie video is. And here is the comment response to it, which is pretty exciting. I try to go through and respond to everybody's comments. Um, just because I like to talk to people and everybody's been really nice with their response to it and I really appreciate that. Um, so I try to go in and reply to everybody's comments, but that's where the video is and isn't that a fun face to land on? Very exciting. So it's Monday, the video came out on Saturday and everybody had a really positive response to it and everybody was really excited to help Emma and I look for a solution to the cartridge issue. I had a few people actually message me from other countries. I had Thrifty Fun, who I think is in Canada, and I had somebody named Gabriel email me from Germany, um, and they were trying to help me find cartridges in other countries for my Barbie typewriter, but my hero today is Chicago typewriter, typewriter Chicago. I always say that wrong. Lucas from Typewriter Chicago, who's actually going to take my original cartridge and re-spool it for me. So he's got a replacement for me. So I'm here at the post office to ship it out to Lucas and get a new cartridge for me. I find that really fun about the typewriter community because everybody has been so supportive and super helpful. They wanna help me find the new ribbon cartridge for my machine and that's just like a really great response to that video. Doesn't matter what the view count is, what matters is that people are having fun and learning about typewriters. And in this case, they want to help me fix mine. So I'm really excited about that. And I think that's a really great response to the video. So that's kind of the life cycle of a video here on Just My Typewriter. That's the let's put it together process. And then I set it up for release and then you guys get to do whatever you want with it. So thanks so much for joining me, joining. Thanks so much for joining me on this adventure as I'm sitting in a hot car in a post office parking lot. And I want to remind you, you're just my type, writer.